All right, I'd like to call this finance committee meeting to order. We have a lengthy agenda. First item is request for uh, assignment of request for council action and discussion. We have a bazillion of them. Uh, finance committee, we have 13-144 fiscal year 11 chip program repairs for 856 Ridgeview Drive. 13-145 expenditure over $15,000 to H Business Solutions. 13-146 expenditure over $15,000 North Gateway Tire for the police. 13-147 municipal court basement flooding. 13-148 contract Ohio EPA 319 grant program. 13-149 amending salary and benefits code 3102B14 clerical help. 13-150 create MCRC capital fund transfer funds. 13151 adopting community development director job description. 13152 expenditure of $15,000 CDW MCRC. 13153 MCRC hosted payment server. Hosted payments. Hosted. Yeah. Yes. Payment server. 13154 zoning code and zoning map amendment. Set public hearing. 13155 expenditure of $15,000. Wing for commercial fire system. 13156 authorized payment greater than $3,000. ORC 570541 D1. 13157 consider amendment of bid requirement per ORC 73505. 13158 budget amendment. 13159 Ohio Police and Fire member contribution rate increases. 13160 increase PO amend ordinance 8813 fuel purchases epic aviation 13161 US 42 widening project 13162 Banana County Transit funding for 2014 13163 MCRC five year capital improvement plan and 13164 purchase agreement for 119 public square any questions on those? <coughs> I'm not going to repeat it. Number two, 13144 expenditure over $15,000 for the fiscal year 2011 CHIP grant uh, Lakeview Electric. Just keep. Who's this? Sandy. Sandy? Oh, you're back in the back. This is a full house rehab under our CHIP program. They actually can go up to 30000 35000 with what they paint this town. They're at 23580 and the only reason they came to finance is because they're going to threshold of 15000 for board control. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, I have comments. Question. Yes, Mr. Uh, the uh, contractor awarded is uh, from Norwalk. Is there any way we can maybe direct these grants to Medina uh, contractors? As long as they as long as they meet the qualifications, of course. Any, any contractor can be put on the bidders list as long as they have the, the criteria and certifications that are required. Okay, Since so it's federal funds. I don't think that we have the option to restrict them to Medina contractors. Okay. How well are these publicized so that uh, Medina contractors are aware of these? That they have the opportunity to bid on them at least? Um, I believe that our consultant sends out letters to uh, the contractors yearly to let them know they can get on the bidders list. Okay. So there's nothing like. Uh, a newspaper advertisement type thing yeah. notice of bid? That I do not believe so. Okay. And is chip grant applied to residential property both <coughs> occupied and rental? No rentals. We did not put rental activities into this grant. So this is <coughs> occupied only? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You mean owner occupied? Owner occupied, that's I'm sorry. I thought that's what you meant. Owner occupied, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 13145 expenditure over $15,000 for Ace Business Solutions. This is me. Darren asked me to explain this because he's not able to be here tonight. Um, we have already purchased. This would not ordinarily be here because the previous purchase was already made, but added together it brings us over to $15,000. We purchased copiers uh, in phone, which are located in the finance department, well, maintenance contracts for copiers that are located in finance, engineering, and planning. And then the idea is that, that by getting them through the same vendor, same contract, it'll make it, and that it's also set for the same time, so that when we go to replace all these, we'll be replacing all these at the same time. We'll have one large bid for 
six or eight copiers and maintenance contracts and the whole thing. We also think we get a little better deal on the maintenance because when they send a truck down, they're sending the truck and a guy to take care of three or four or five or six copiers instead of just one. <clears throat> and I know what Board of Control, an issue came up with a different copier in the police department, and I know there's other departments, and we're trying to, you know, pool those together, I take it. And whenever they <coughs> we're, <coughs> we're just on one of the out years of that one at the police department once it reaches its expiration then we'll likely pull it under the same <coughs> umbrella yeah. that's our goal yes. but we're not scrapping functional copiers it would right to get out of the program right we're just waiting as they come on so three years is that where we're going contract line mm -hmm. yeah. What's the duration of the contract? I thought it was, thought it was mm -hmm. five on it, but it, no, uh, oh, it's three. It's the three was the renewal. Yeah, five was the original. Three is the renewal. So then we're aiming everything to that same point three years from when that started. Now I know we've done joint efforts with the schools. Is this something that maybe in the future would work or no? We originally purchased these in the joint effort with the schools, mm -hmm. and then what happened was. The copiers that we had purchased were uh, Rico's, which went through their vendor. Mm -hmm. Their vendor then ceased to be a Rico dealer, and it was a pretty messy split. And so we couldn't stick with that because Ace is the vendor that can still service those. Now, when we get to the end and we're ready to bid all the copiers, we'll certainly look at working with the schools at that point because we'll be looking to buy new machines so we can buy them from any vendor, any machine. Right now, we have the machines we have, so we're limited to vendors sure. that okay. can work. I mean, you can't take your Chevy to the Ford dealer type of thing. Other questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. 13146, expenditure over $15,000 to North Gateway Tire. This is a finance Thank only, you. I guess, modification. Neil. It is. This is a sanitation. No, this is for the this is for the police cruisers changing adding um, additional ten thousand dollars to a fifteen thousand dollar already outstanding purchase order, I guess, or a over right. invoice. Yeah, this is for uh, <coughs> lease repairs, and um, they ran the fifteen thousand through board of control at the beginning of the year, and um, here here we are in August, and more repairs to come towards the end of the year. So because it went over the board of control threshold, that's why they're asking for the. Questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 13147, Municipal Court Basement Flooding. Nino? Yes, thank you. Uh, talked to Lori. Uh, she had suggested that we table it because the judge or Lori couldn't be here, and I said, well, I don't want to hold up any more of the issues. Let's just get it out for discussion with respect to uh, moving forward. The judge has put in a request. Um, as this council is aware, uh, courthouses experienced flooding on three different occasions. First time back in 03, resulted in some uh, drywall um, replacement and uh, tearing out of the carpet, replacing the VCT vinyl composite tile. Since then, we put in a flood guard unit. Long story short, it's needed maintenance. Uh, flood guard would keep um, floor drain from back surging. And <coughs> The installer didn't uh, talk about the maintenance of the flood guard unit. It corroded, so it allowed it another time for a backup to happen. So it happened a second time. It was it was less <coughs> excuse me invasive with re with respect to the amount of uh, backup. So we, we hired a contractor, came in, Schaefer Plumbing. They installed a riser on the floor about 18 inches height. That was the recommendation. Uh, got with the county sanitary engineers. Uh, videotaped the uh, sanitary sewer and basically whenever there's heavy storm water infiltration the uh, courthouse is about nine feet in depth as far as the basement so it, it um, receives the, um, the back surge and the flooding. Now are you talking about a backwater valve? Is that it was a uh, flood guard it was just is a one-way valve that would keep. You no know, so when you say flood guard is that like backwater valve? Is the brand of this? Oh okay. <coughs> There's a install inside right? the floor drain that would only allow water to go down but not come back up. Right. Um, and again, it corroded um, without being maintained unannounced to um, anyone and, and it allowed for some infiltration again. So then recently we had the five inch rain. We had uh, was overwhelmed and uh, even with this 18 inch riser, uh, it resulted in some flooding. Well, how, do you, how do we stop the, what are we going to do now? Well, that's. 
that's where I was going to go with the conversation with the Santa engineers. We're like, you know, I understand the judge's frustration, everybody over there, we don't want it either. They call every time. We want to end this. And what it will take is uh, a lift station. It's about a ten to fifteen thousand dollar expenditure in installation and what it will do is a total disconnect from the same streets <coughs> where a lift station will allow um, it's kind of like a grader pump commercial installed at the sanitary main connection where it connects to the sanitary sewer that the county owns totally disconnected from that so they will never can be a back surge from their system into the quartz lateral ever I guess I kind of confused because how much flooding do we have here at City Hall? We don't experience the same. Are we not in a basement like there would be? It's elevation change, and believe it or not, the system, where it's located, just the way the system is. No, I mean, for that building to put in a lift station, would that lift station help any other neighboring properties? Do we have flooding in other houses around there? Or? It, it, to be honest with you, it could result in um, if there's infiltration from the <coughs> sanitary sewer being overwhelmed, it will not go to the court. It, it could go elsewhere in that. That's, well, that's why, we have to why would we do this, I guess? It's a, I know the judges have a problem, but can't we go back to the second flooding when we had a device in there and just maintain it? Well, that's, I, I guess we can ask that question, but it's not. I mean, because I have the 15,000 for a lift station for one basement. That's about our backwater valve. Put a new bed has a flapper in there and you have a riser that can go in and change the gasket. Well, how much does it cost? I guess I'm cautioning with that. If we have, an eight, we have an 18 inch riser and if we stop that water from coming into the basement house, it will go elsewhere as well. And I think it's something that we need to. Uh, well, I'd rather spend a few the top of the $100 and 15000 well, that, that was a recommendation of the county sanitary engineers because I, I explained to them we can't have this as a third time and the judge is fed up with it and I understand. And, that was the recommendation was to the installation of a uh, lift station. But the recommendation was based upon we had something that worked, but it just wasn't maintained. I don't know if it was 100 percent the flood guard. We just didn't have the heavy rains. Maybe not. Is the judge offered to use some squirt building funds? No. I didn't see the request. I understand. No, it says yeah. general fund, public buildings. Public buildings. That's why I would be hesitant to put a, a lift station because a lift station is usually used in situations that cover <coughs> multiple properties, not just one. I mean multiple, or bigger. I mean, commercial application. Right, yes. commercial application. One thing that concerns me is when you said the water will go elsewhere. Could, it can. could we be opening ourselves up for liability to adjoining properties and things like that? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think if you have a, a one-way drain, I guess you call it or whatever, it is no, I'm talking with the lift station. You know, if you have that check valve in there, all you're doing is you're just not letting the water come up and be relieved. I, I understand that, but with the lift station not being fully cognizant of exactly how it works, and your comment that we could be sending the water elsewhere, I just raises the question: Are we going to maybe destroy another property, destroy this one because of it? Well, I'd also be concerned about the maintenance of the lift station. It's not free. I mean, you're going to have ongoing maintenance well, of the yeah. lift station that you not otherwise have. Mm -hmm. So. My only concern with this request is we've all taken tours over there and see that just about every possible inch of the building is utilized. That includes the basement. Uh, and I think it is, I mean, just like your house, I mean, if you have flooding in an area of your house, you can move stuff in case it floods again and try to remedy the, the situation. But I, I'm not saying that the lift station is the answer, but I can see the, the, the frustration. I mean, that's that basement is, is utilized. So I think we do are responsible for taking some action and trying to remedy this, this, this situation. Even if a new court is built and, and somebody else right, is going to be utilizing that, maybe they won't have to utilize the if basement I made as one much. Further, Denny, uh, to, uh, not to belabor the point, where the water comes in at the uh, floor drain is in the, board of the um, communications room where the actual control panels are, the electrical panels. In this last event, when we had a five-inch rain, they called about four o'clock, five after four. Had they left the building, there would have been significant flooding. And based on well, let me ask you a question. Uh, why couldn't we eliminate the drains in the basement and put a sump pump in there for cases when they flood their own basement? Well, this is tied to the sanitary sewer because there's a restroom in the basement. Mm. 
There's just the one restroom with that rear. Correct, yeah. And the floor drains. Well, I guess the, the question would be the floor drains, eliminate those. I mean, I guess, would, how often do they have spill water down or water <laughs> comes in that basement that needs the floor drains? Is that a co guard? I mean, I, I, I start doing and again, I, I, I understand everybody's concerns, but I think Nino has, and the administration has taken the steps of getting the opinions from the county sanitation and I, I mean I, I know we could all have ideas but I understand I mean I'm not willing to spend 15000 on a list station for one well, basement I mean, that's you have to maintain a list station we have no idea what the cost no, I understand of what you're saying I just I think that and Denny I want to get something correct and I'm just looking at options I mean I'm, I'm not an engineer or anything like that but I've been in the industry so that's why I'm asking about it you know there's a, a backwater valve out there that needs maintenance for a flapper to be changed out but uh, I mean that's what they're made for so I'm just picking his brain to make sure uh, okay. we looked at everything. Nino knows a lot more about this obviously than I but just to clarify something it, lift stations are not necessarily just for commercial buildings it has more to do with where you're you're having to <coughs> take the, the elevation um, for example there's residential lots um, that weren't built on, on Longview where it meets Walter. And the reason for that is because from the roadway, they, they were <coughs> low. And anybody that built a house there would have to put a lift station in. So subsequently, those properties were bought by the county when they expanded and put job and family services up there. Because in an application like that, then a lift station makes much more sense than an individual home having to do one, right. one for each one. But the reason for that is because you build a home down in that valley, you have to get it up to where the sewer lateral is, and hence, hence the problem. So. But I guess the question would be, in our situation, we don't have a lift station in the current facility in the basement, which is fine. It's just when there's heavy rain, or the problem is when storm sewer water gets in the sanitary sewer system right. somehow. Which is a whole other question. Which is a whole other question. Why are those two? Because if the water is getting in, the storm water is getting into it, then the sanitary is getting out of it. Right, right. But the storm is not necessarily coming from us. No, it's not. No, it's not coming from anywhere. anywhere. No, no. Just okay. so it just fills up the pipes and they have nowhere right. to go, so it goes to least resistance. And when I went to the county sanitary engineers, they said, you know, the judge like to have this resolved. And they said that's ultimately what you need to do is have a lift station will allow for a total disconnect and only allow for pumpage out into the sanitary sewer versus the back surge if there were in fact to be a back surge. But I guess the question that I bring up again is that there wasn't really a problem once we had the valve that was there. There was really no issue during the big storms from previous years. It just was the <coughs> valve deteriorated because it wasn't maintained and that's when the water came back in. Correct. So why w w would it be fix the valve? <laughs> Probably yeah. first, that's not like the, the whole issue. Issue. What happened. Well, it wasn't maintained. I guess the question is what I mean, would it once a year we pay for somebody to come out to check it, or? I think it would be a lot cheaper than 15000 I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Yeah. Nina, what do you think? I mean, is that? It's if the maintenance person is going to do that function or task and not forget, or, you know, a lot of times it'll corrode on its own, and we you have to oil it. Do you know how much it costs, I guess? Is the it wasn't expensive. That's why it was a very inexpensive fix, but it's not. The county doesn't really recommend that you use these because it's, it's a one-way valve type that it's not foolproof. That's the issue. Understood, but it works, I guess. It worked. <laughs> I guess I'm getting confused. I mean, I, that's why I know they make them. I mean, I remember watching TV and seeing one being installed out of the side of a house so that the, there's no... Right. Because they were getting flooded basements, too, and they said you put this valve, and as soon as something tries to come back, it shuts it. it can't come out. Only can go one way. I, I, I would think that maybe since we know that that worked, and I don't think anybody's really on board to spend $15,000 on a lift station right now, let's give that check valve, I call it check valve, but I think it's the same thing. And then um, look at other options. Yeah, and give, yeah, let's get that fixed for the temporary thing. Let's see how well that works. Put it on a maintenance schedule so that who's ever responsible knows that every six months they got to go out and at least check it and maintain it. And in the meantime, we look at some other options to put a permanent fix in. So I guess we'd still need a resolution to authorize the purchase of the valve and installation of the mm -hmm. replacement valve. I don't think you do, it's not that much. No, it's not that much. It's a very expensive fix. 
Right. Well, but you know, you seem very hesitant. I am because I've had conversations with the judge and just the history here. Well, I understand. Okay, this is with the. You don't think it's going to fly with the judge? And, and <laughs> right. I'm not just sold on the flood guard. Well, I guess the question is, how many times did it flood when the flood guard was in there and operating properly? Because the, the, the adjunct question to that is, is once when it failed. When it failed. So I, you're not convincing me to, to get a lift station. I mean, but it doesn't. What's that period of time? You know, was that put in in 2001? It was the 03 was the big uh, flood, and I think it was after the second time, if I'm not mistaken. I can check on that. But. So, we then, had, so then that's really the analysis is okay it was put in on this date and did we have any of those sure we have any events as well you know the rain sure rains we did. Like, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rains heavy heavy year that I'm aware of we've had big rains and floods well, some years heavier than exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we don't generally get eight inches in a, an hour yeah, yeah, I don't ever and that's what they that's what they have but then you, then you prove the point. If we don't get five inches an hour, do we spend fifteen thousand dollars for something that may happen once every twelve years? That's the other question. Well, but then if we go back to the electrical issue. I, I, I do get the, that. It's in that room. Yeah. It's in the electrical. Well, I think the other issue is if you know we're, we're going to build another courthouse and sometime we're going to assume that building. You know, it it may be money better spent to fix it the way the sanitary engineers say to fix it now and not have to go back. And do it again, again later. Um, and I'm not an engineer either, but it sounds to me like the administration's taking a look at this. The judge has an opinion, and and it does sound like a permanent, does sound like a permanent fix, right? The lift station? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But are yeah, we just pushing the? And my comment was else? not supporting the judge. My comment was supporting. Well, I'm not the supporting the judge either. The, the people Don't that have the expertise. All right. So what is the cost per year to maintain the station? I have to be honest with you, I don't know that answer, John, because of medic. Why would I we need that? to, um, I, I guess, investigate that. If, if the power's out and it rains, what happens with that station? You better have a backup battery. You don't have it, man. It won't come back in. It won't go out, but you won't be able to come in. So, so it's a different disconnect from the system. So like it's just so you don't have it back to the system. Right, but then the water comes in the other way. You have some water to the system. They make it for that reason. Nito, one other question real quick to the lift station. So it's it's pumping up and out. Now, is that going to go to a line that's open? It goes into this tank the sanitary sewer. But if the sanitary, sanitary sewer is all backing up, and you got a lift station that's pumping up and out because of the elevation, is that pipe then that's a little bit higher that's pumping guaranteed to not be backed up as well? Or? The lift station is a forced to. It's a forced pump. It's not grab so it's, it's pushing it. So it's and just going to overcome gravity. That's going to really yeah, push yeah, somewhere up the road. The county should be but again, if there's water infiltrating that, oh, they're all the same yeah. problem. Right. Yeah. The pipe that can only, the, it'll hold the volume of the pipe. Right. Correct. The issue's been now the outlet it's with the back surge, back surge of incoming. Okay. Right. That's the issue. Well, they said originally they wanted to be here. Did you say originally Lori and the judge wanted to be here tonight to talk about it? Yes. They were on the table. Okay. Right. And they were ready to table it. They were. Okay, we'll table it then. <laughs> and I, wonder, I wonder though if somebody from the sanitation sanitary engineer should come and talk about it. They could, they could come and have a conversation. Yeah. It's just for us, the first time we're talking sure, about sure. it, I guess. Sure. It's a big amount of money and trying to understand if there's some other option. Okay. That works. All right, we'll table that item. All right, since Mr. Hamley has arrived, we can skip down since he probably doesn't wait to 7.30 to discuss this one. So item number 20, which is 13162, the Madonna County Transit Funding for 2014. And let me try to find it in my packet here. Wait a second. Does everybody get to that section? How much is like here? 160? Get me. Almost there. They're in there separately. Yeah, they're in there. Yeah. Well, I didn't do them separately, I guess. Okay, I'm at 162. Everybody there? I'm 161. Okay, uh, Mayor, you can start off, I guess. Uh, I met with uh, Mr. Hamley to uh, discuss the change in transit funding from. Um, 
rural to urban, which has caused the demise for uh, the county transit. Um, there's 52,000 people in rural in the county, um, but because of this change in classification, um, there is no funding to, to support those folks. Um, the, to overcome the deficit, uh, the commissioners and um, Mike from the transit have um, come up with plans to, that would actually increase the hours um, that's operating in the city. I gave you a handout that, that talks about some of those um, talking points. Um, but they're actually starting earlier and um, they're asking for the city to raise our rate um, from what we had been paying, which was 17500 a year, to 45000 um, The county, and um, I told Ms. Uh, Commissioner Hamley that that would be my recommendation to the council if you're favorable to this, is that we make a contingent upon the county um, making up the difference of $220,000 from the uh, casino dollars or whatever fund that they have for we're, we're not paying the 45 if, if they're not, not sharing the cost. Um, if there are particular questions, I, I'm sorry, I have it now. It used to be the buses would start at 8 a.m. They backed them up to 2 a.m. now. Um, so that's going to give us two hours plus earlier if people are dependent on that for work or appointments or, or whatnot. You said they back them up to 6 a.m.? 6 a.m. Oh, okay. instead of 8 a.m., yes, sir. Um, they're, they're really asking uh, Medina for about half of the, the needed match. Um, the very bottom there, if you're looking at this um, transit discussion, dated 8 one you have that handout. But the total loop expense um, is 348, almost $349,000. That 45,000 they're requesting is about 13% of the match. Um, generally, it's not unusual. Uh, for communities to be asked to pay 20% um, if, if that amount of money, our 17.5 is only 5%. Um, at, as you can imagine, uh, Medina, because of our um, composition of citizens, um, uh, both uh, elderly, um, disabilities, uh, as well as um, those that either don't have driver's licenses or can't afford cars, uh, Medina residents tend to use the transit uh, countywide probably more than the other two cities do. Um, and and I, I feel that it's critical you know, for, for our residents that we do the best we can to try to support the service. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Brad. You're, you're up. Well, no, I agree with the mayor that it's, it's critical for uh, the residents of our, our community. Uh, you know, I work over in the industrial park. I see the transits running through there, taking people to their job, and, and, and those with the disabilities that need to get around. It's vital. Um, but I had that was one of my questions in reference to the, the casino money. Um, I know it's kind of the commissioners are directed in their own own way. And what what have you used the casino money for so far? Um, so far, uh, for, for this year, of course, we started just getting it done right. this, pa this past year, a little bit last year, but, and now this year, and it is under what was projected, uh, or even our projections early on, the adjustments there. But primarily, we, we've been up using it in maintenance uh, for capital improvements, actually, that were deferred over the last, since the recession in, in 2008, so starting in late 2008, 2009, uh, utilizing it uh, for that about 900,000. Of which about 300 and 350 thousand of that uh, was was uh, set aside for you see the scaffolding going on in the clock tower um, and um, basically the restoration of that um, and uh, likewise likewise we had other other areas that uh, of county government that uh, had not been funded we, we went for four years without uh, raises uh, for employees and were able to. Uh, in, in keeping with our, our, certainly we ended up uh, completing a round of negotiations with our collective bargaining units, and uh, there was the uh, employees that had not been part of collective bargaining units that had suffered the worst because they had not received any <coughs> whatsoever during that period of time. So we were able to uh, bring them up uh, at, uh, to uh, at least give them the raise they haven't gotten. Uh, we didn't catch them up to where they were, 
uh, but certainly would at least been able to, to start with a, a small two and a half percent raise uh, this past year. So some of that money obviously went for, for that. And we also had uh, areas in terms of our health expense, uh, health, uh, our insurance uh, that covers some of those costs. Um, the top of my head, that's about the best I could say. Well, we're anticipating that there's still a, a heavy demand for the use of those dollars. This will have to compete against the others. And I've already pledged to the mayor, obviously, and then from the very beginning, I am a I'm the liaison for transit that I'd be advocating to my, to my uh, uh, colleagues uh, for the appropriation of, of, uh, the, of, of the shortfall of the, about the 220000 from the casino revenues anticipated for next year. Remember, this is a projected shortfall in 2014. Uh, and uh, so the, now we're, we're talking about this would be for next year, in which case that would be another appropriation year. But those are areas that we're going to have to get a com commitment from. We went for the, uh, certainly for the grants that the, the mayor was referencing that was called the CMAC uh, that's listed, as well as the uh, new, new Freedom. Those did require matches. We basically split the, split the match. That's an 80-20. Uh, essentially, that's how we came up with the 45,000. 45,000, uh, it's basically a 90,000 match, uh, and then uh, 45 from you, 45 from us, and then of course we've got the 220 that we're gonna have to uh, obviously come up with, even with the other uh, formulas. We are not only moving in, uh, at, a, at a reduction in, in revenues, we also have to change how we operate. Uh, much of this money is, is like the CMAC and the, is restricted for fixed routes. And so we have to go much more to a fixed route system. Uh, our problem, as the mayor pointed out, is in the rural areas where 52,000 people we're supposed to still provide service for it, but get no money for it. Uh, in, in a sense, if uh, Medina, had been willing to do like Brunswick and create your own transit system like Brunswick did many years ago because of the urban spending, you could have done that. And we in the county, uh, I guess arguably, we'd say, well, we'll still stay a rural and try to go after the rural dollars. Uh, but the state didn't allow us to do that, and I'm not sure you all, the city, wanted to start your own bus system. Uh, now, did Brunswick do that tied in with RTA? Or no, 1980s. No, 1980s, they, did they, did, they started their own in the 1980s. And essentially, they're, they're uh, Mike, if you want to come up here. Yeah. Sorry, Mike Selmore. I think that they right now locally contribute, what's 150,000? I'm sorry? What does Brunswick BTA uh, city put in for their transit system? Their, their transit system budget is about 350,000. But they're, but they're part of it. The, part, the contract that we have. No, about how much they do have local money is what I'm asking. Uh, like 100, about hundreds of thousands. Yeah, but yeah. So it, it, essentially, you're going to get a better system for forty-five thousand for the forty-five thousand yeah. than what they're paying for, uh, just by virtue of the county doing the, the service. Uh, but we, I think we, we're looking at the bigger picture. We do our we are working collaboratively with them. We operate for them uh, as part of a contract, um, and uh, so that's that's kind of a that's a, more of an enterprise uh, account, if you will. But uh, by, and, by and large, we at least then have a, a larger system we're able to coordinate, focus on coordinated transportation for our residents across city borders rather than worry about it. So the, the, the request is 45,000 contingent upon the county kicking into 220,000, which would keep the level of service, uh, which you just mentioned, at a higher level than it is current. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Actually, the increased level of service for Medina City. Yeah. Um, right. What we figured out was it would increase it about 17 hours a week. <coughs> uh, presently, it was stated, presently uh, the first bus leaves our garage at 8 o'clock. We would start them, possibly we'll start both of them at 6 o'clock, and they would run until approximately 7 p.m., which is really what Brunswick does. They start at 6.20, go to 7.10. So okay. that's what I'm looking at. Plus on Saturdays, uh, we only have one bus running, and that one starts at 8 and goes till 5.45. We would have two buses running all day Saturday. Plus now we would have also the period. And then on top of it, okay, the, the way the laws read with, it, with the federal government, when you run a fixed route or a deviated fixed route, by law you have to deviate off the route three quarters of a mile. That's the law. What we've done is I've gone out and got a separate grant, which is called that New Freedom, and requested that we would go one mile off the route. So what we will have is we'll have two fixed routes that would run up and down the way they are right now. And then you'll have two complementary pair of transits that would run a mile on either side of the route. So that would pick up the people that cannot get to a bus stop. Right. So, so that basically will replace the on-demand services. Mm -hmm. That's correct. correct. That's correct. The irony is the cities will actually see an increase in the level of service with what we've developed. It's the townships that are probably not going to do as well as, as, as we've had in the past. 
and we're still the uh, I've got we're getting scheduled a meeting with, with Speaker Bashelder and, and through NOACA our, uh, our executive director and Federal Transit to talk further about uh, some of the things that were in the paper the, the mayor hopefully I think shared with you the letter uh, that asking us to be able to at least access uh, uh, rural dollars uh, other states allow systems such as us uh, to access uh, where we have both the a large rural population allow those communities <coughs> to access both rural and public and, and, and urban dollars, but the uh, state of Ohio doesn't. And so I guess that's where we're going to have to uh, advocate at the, at, the, uh, at the state level for those kind of changes in policy. But that's not one that's going to solve our problem next year. Well, I think the, I mean, the transit is definitely needed. You have a segment of population that is dependent upon it. So, uh, and I do agree that the, Talk for the for the ride. You're talking eight dollars, Jackie, to ride the. Oh, you're listening to me, yeah, yeah, yeah both ways. And I am. You're talking at a disabled and a senior citizens um, on a fixed income, and somebody works at Walmart eight bucks to go to work. That's that's more than they make in an hour. Well, I understand that, but would the answer be? Not have any ability to go into transit. No, that's or? not. No, I, I don't mean to say that that would be right. the answer at all. Right. But I just don't think that people realize how much they do have to pay to take advantage of what you say you're giving them. True. It's a lot. I understand. The, the fares represent what five to six percent. The fares represent somewhere about six seven percent total of, of our of the actual cost of our expense. So. We try to keep it as low as possible, and obviously, because of the nature of the clientele, can ill afford it. Eighty percent of the, when we did a survey a couple of years ago, eighty percent of our riders had access to no car. Right. And so those are the people we serve. Well, and then on top of it, the way the way this works will be, the fixed route is a dollar fifty one way a one way trip compared to four dollars anywhere in Medina. Right. The ADA complimentary, to be able to ride the ADA complimentary, you're going to have to the client will have to fill out paperwork that they are ADA eligible. That would give them half fare, so that would mean that ride would be two dollars instead of four. Also, we are working with Faith in Action where they do uh, give tokens mm -hmm. uh, to a lot of the citizens to ride through. So does the office for older adults. Um, and, you know, so, yeah, the fare is not, because of the fixed route, you're decreasing the fare. Right, I understand. Now, again, the question with the commissioners you set up to agree to uh, allocate $220,000, whether it be from the casino's money or some other funding from the county, mm -hmm. the other two commissioners would have to agree okay. to that. I understand. Now, they, I would just argue if you talk to them that, you know, people that live in the city are also live in the county. Well, they're both are very much aware of the uh, of the issue with, with transit. Uh, uh, both have indicated that that's something we're going to have to consider. If the citizens, we're likewise dealing with the same, if you will, we have the same deal on the table for Wadsworth. Wadsworth is going through. We were accessing uh, Akron uh, UZA money, and uh, but the same thing. We've got the CMAC grant for them as well. We're asking for forty-five thousand to provide, and I anticipate that they would provide probably have the same condition right. as you would for this. And I would have no objections to that. <coughs> if anything, I kind of I welcome that because uh, at this point, I just need a second vote <laughs> for all practical purposes. Bill, you know, it doesn't operate on holidays. Is that right? Correct. It doesn't correct. happen. Through, through, through some cost uh, cutting that we had to do the last several years, that is correct. One of the concerns that um, I've heard, and, I, and I'm pretty sure uh, Brian's heard in Ward 1, too, from residents, is a lot, of, you know, a lot of folks that rely on that transportation are the same folks that have to work on a holiday. You know, it, a lot of the holidays <coughs> aren't the kind of holiday that nobody works. Yeah, and clarify even further, it's not your, your major holidays. It's things like Columbus Day or, you know, mm -hmm. Um, it's come up a couple of times where they're going to cut those days out. Well, actually, we did this past we year. We did that in October. Yeah. What's yeah. the What's the possibility of stitching them back in? Um, approximately on the fixed route, it, it'd be possible once we look at the numbers again. Okay. A fixed route only. I would. I probably go a fixed route on. <coughs> <coughs> you have to do the uh, paratransit too, right? After the ADA. Yeah. Anytime transit. we operate the fixed route, we also have to offer that uh, ADA paratransit, so yeah. it would be there. It may not be countywide we could do the uh, right. the, the holiday. The holiday, so we should be out in Spencer and Chatham, but uh, if we do a fixed route, we definitely have to. Uh, 
<clears throat> at the same time offer that ADA. Is, does this affect any of like the dialysis routes or anything, any of the special routes? As of right now, with the cuts that I'm looking at, I keep the dialysis. Um, what we, as of right now? As of, as of right now. If I've got to cut deeper, we have to cut deeper. But as of right now, we have five dialysis runs Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What I have done in Wadsworth, because we actually have a couple buses doing dialysis in Wadsworth, but I'm, I'm doing the two fixed routes up in Wadsworth. In fact, I was driving it, to, I was out there doing it today, where we were actually going by the hospital and the clinic where they were going to. Plus, I would have the one ADF there that would work as a dialysis run. But we've also met with them uh, to, to help them improve their scheduling. Yeah. Some of it has to do, they've gotten kind of lax and because the transit has been, been there and available. Now, since it's restricted, we've, they're working with the dialysis centers to actually have much better schedule, uh, more efficient scheduling for us, rather than uh, uh, having the buses there. Uh, and I think that we've gotten uh, fairly good, good uh, compliance or agreement with them that they're going to try everything they can to schedule those seats so that they can fit more in line with the, the uh, timing for transit buses. So I guess the, currently we do 17.5, which I believe all of it comes from the, is it CMAC? I think it's a, is it a chip? CDBG. 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 But it's not, it's not all, but it's um, roughly last year was about 11,000. Okay. 6,500 came from the general fund. Okay, so we're an additional 27.5 would have to come from the general fund. Yes, sir. And this is anticipated probably to be a yearly contribution that's going to continue, I'd imagine. Rather, I mean, yeah, unless the state changes, sir. 45000 a year from now on out. So this is going to be an impact that we'd have to take in consideration of budgeting. Yes. Well, um, we're, now, we have a, this CMAC grant we have is for three years. So essentially, we have to come up with a plan within three years for, uh, we we'll have to say, more stable funding or other funding for Medina County Public Transit. This is, a, if you, I won't say a stopgap, but it's a, lot, a way to, to get us going. Well, the next three years, we're going to have to determine how we're going to be able to uh, fund the system as we make the transition from, uh, from rural to urban and from a more demand response to almost entirely fixed routes with some demand response. Uh, there's going to require some training of our customers. We're talking about a grant for, for that. But in that three-year period, we have to come up with a plan for local funding. Well, I guess the question would be also, yeah. which is, I guess, would be in your purview, but yeah. more difficult is the, the sales tax allocation because some accounting the sales tax, I don't know if Cuyahoga County kind of does, to their transit facilities, right. whether it be 1% or whatever. But that would be a lot for, I mean, the amount you're talking here uh, to keep that, you know, response, fixed routes, or even... Uh, dialysis will now maybe be able to be in some type of allocation of that, but then of course it'll take away from some other well, allocation. Well, what, I, what I would look is that the continued communication between us and the cities and so forth to deal with a, a recognized issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the urban systems, uh, by and large, I call it Darwinian, you either survive or you don't, and those that, that don't, uh, uh, basically because they don't have local funding. The, the presumption is with an urban system, you're going to have local funding someplace. Right. Right. And so we've been able to stitch this together by some these last minutes, this new freedom grant. Uh, that's it. There's no more new freedom. Uh, in terms of CMAC dollars, not likely going to. They've already changed under MAC 21. The use of CMAC is no longer a category you can get funding for. So with all the change at the federal level, this is kind of the last, fortunately, we're able to put this together. We're going to have to develop a plan in the next three years how we're going to address this, and hopefully it'll also mean uh, uh, our, some success at this at the state level to deal with certainly the rural uh, portion of this. But uh, it's just going to take time and effort, I think, to, for us to work all together to develop a plan. And, and the mayor and the staff have been attending our consortium meetings, and there's been this discussion long term: what are we going to do about transit? Are we going to form a separate transit board? Uh, an authority uh, have the representation on that authority or board of, uh, of, the, of the municipalities uh, rather than just be a system operated by the commissioners that uh, obviously is an option in the future but right now uh, we're just asking for assistance for the next several years based upon these grants that we've got uh, continued assistance is appreciated but we're going to have to really come in and come up with a better with a plan because uh, this is only stop gap for three years any other Questions we got? I, I just want to, I, you know, I, I salute you for your your efforts, sir, and, and Commissioner Hamble, as, as always, you've you've spearheaded and, and uh, 
support of the transit, which I've, I've heard nothing but positive uh, comments from, and I'm in a position that I, I, I do get to talk to a lot of your customers. Uh, I do feel uh, that the, the, the state and the federal level, you know, the, the municipalities, the county, uh, have seen cuts to the schools. We're just continually seeing cuts and cuts and cuts, which we're all having to tighten our belts and find other sources of income. But I, I, I think at some point in time, we collectively are, are going to have to collectively approach our, our state representatives and our federal <coughs> representatives. And uh, it, it, this is just going to continue to, to dribble down to the local communities. And, and uh, we're getting tightened to the to the point that like you said we're gonna have to find other other sources of income and uh, I think we can hopefully address that through communications with the state representatives thank you and Keith I mean I don't know if we could do this but in the general administration fund maybe we can just so we're cognizant of it put a line item in there or something just so we know that what we're gonna to allocate to transit in future years so we can keep an eye on this and make a determination. It hasn't been its own line item in the past. This has been in general administration. I don't know. Um, Just so we can tag it so we understand what it is, I guess. Maybe, I don't know if it would be a different contractual service or something like that. I have a question. Is the funding being requested on top of the uh, grant funding that we yes. currently give? Yes. So it would be 11,000, right. We get 11,000 as Mayor indicated. Correct. Uh, it would be an additional then about 34,000. Okay. So the total being the 45? Five, yes. Great. Right. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> you know, we all know how important the transit is, and you know, I agree that we've all been pinching to get by under this economy and cuts from the state, but you know, I'm happy to see that some of this casino money is going actually to, and don't get me wrong, I know you guys are spending money on that. Mm -hmm. the, the courthouse there would plays to me, and probably others, a big role in our uptown area. <clears throat> Um, but in the future here, I, I'm glad to see that some of that money that should be spread throughout the county is getting to the municipalities as well. And I know the mayor's, and I applaud him for that. I know he's been fighting to try to get some of those funds to help out the city of Medina. And this is an example that where that casino dollars is spread throughout the county, even in the municipalities. So thank you, Mayor, for fighting for that. I'll make a motion. To approve the 45,000 contingent on the county making up the difference from the casino money. Second. Any further discussion or comment? And I have one question. <coughs> what if Wadsworth doesn't commit? Well, we'll have to modify the service. Uh, the service was provided at Wadsworth. I mean, okay, so it won't affect us. No, no, we'll not. We'll not. That's, that's, right. a, that's a, a, a separate agreement. They also have a separate <coughs> urbanized uh, uh, formula money that, that comes <coughs> to them. For the first time, we'll be able to access. Okay. Acker Metro has been using it for years, and we're finally getting access right. to it. So, uh, but so that won't affect that. Okay. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and just a note here, number 19. While we're down this area, 13161 is going to be reassigned to the streets and sidewalks for discussion. 13161, uh, 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 item number 19. Okay. The US 42 widening Great. project is more discussion needs to be had. It's just not a Great. finance meeting discussion. So okay. that'll be reassigned. <clears throat> okay, going back up to item number six, 13148, authorizing Ohio EPA grant program. And this will be Sandy. Yes, back in March of 2012, um, council authorized uh, the city to file an application with the Ohio <coughs> Environmental Protection Agency. <coughs> for an Ohio EPA 319 grant program for the uh, restoration of approximately 2,000 linear feet of the Champion Creek. Happy to say we were awarded that grant. Um, when that was approved for filing by council in 2012, it was with the stipulations of the grant that there be a local match. Uh, the Grant is 80% of the total cost, and the remainder is $74,384 would be the local match. Um, this request is to, first of all, authorize us to enter into a contract with Ohio EPA to establish and to establish the funding source for the local match. Back in uh, March of 2012, when it came before council to approve the filing for the, the um, grant funds, there was discussion about 
possibly using open space funds or general capital. So um, those are the things that were discussed at that time. And when does the decision have to be made that you're mentioning you're going to get together with the OEPA to make a determination where those funds come from? Or are you asking us to designate where the funds come no, from? No, we to are asking to designate where those funds are coming from <coughs> and to enter into the contract. The local match is actually 131000 but 17000 um, of in-kind personnel. Mm -hmm. Then we had a $20,000 uh, easement from Bennett Lumber, mm -hmm. $20,000 from 3M, and the remainder, if you take that 47 off the 131, is a 74384. And so that's really what we're missing. And would we, you have a recommendation of the administration of where the funds should come from? Well, as we said, uh, when we first talked about the grant, we thought a couple funding sources were um, the uh, open space has an amount of money in it. What, for each ward you're talking about, or but that's, yeah, that's most of the wards are pretty much out. Only ward one has money. Are they, they gone too? Mm -hmm. We have some. Right. The rest of the wards are. So and right. since this isn't anywhere close to ward one, I would suggest general cap would be 301-0707-54411. I would. That's what I was thinking too. One time expenditure, because we have about we have. There's, there's, fund, of funds. there's right. sufficient funds to cover that. You will need an appropriation because <coughs> it's not appropriated, but right. there, there are sufficient funds in that. In that I think that's, I'm fine with the 301. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the majority of all of this is in Ward 4 and 3, which obviously benefits those wards, but uh, I think it still benefits the entire community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's playing in the role of our downtown revitalization of that area, and everybody's using the trail along there, and the creek runs along there, so mm -hmm. I think it's in important for everybody. Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Second. For a 301 account. From General Capital 301. Any further discussion? And that's 74,384, Kathy. That's what we're looking for from the... Yeah, got it. You got the account number. That'll be on the appropriation adjustment for next time, too. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Next one is 13149, amending section 3102B. 14 clerical help. Mr. Dern. This is uh, my submission, Mr. Huber. I have <coughs> submitted. We have a uh, part timer who's out at the present time and had to be replaced, so we covered that through the clerical help position. Council created this a few years ago. These are substitutes, so they're kind of floaters. It's, it's under the mayor, but they don't, that doesn't mean they work in the mayor's office. They work in finance, they work in service, they work wherever there's. Uh, somebody who's not there needs to be covered. We, um, the way it was, it's, it, Mr. Huber asked me to put this in because it was pretty, he felt it was pretty unclear the way it was worded before. It was worded that we could have three people or the equivalent number of hours of three people and thought it would be better just to say five people. So my redo here is just to eliminate the three, go to five and get rid of this paragraph after it. Well, why do we need, I guess the question is we have three filled now and what the one you're doing makes it four. So the question would be, where do you get five from again? How are you adding up to five? You can make it four, I was leaving room. <clears throat> right. The, the thing is with the, and this is why the hours were put in in the first place. We have a couple people who are in this group who are retired people who are not, who are often not available at all and who aren't available for 29, 29 hour, hours a week, plus this 20 hour, 29 hour a week thing came in after this was authorized. So none of these people can work more than 29 hours, which which is part of the reason I, I said five, because if, you're, you're, if you have a person out and you're trying to cover that spot, Gives you, you run out of time real quick, especially if some of your people that are on this list already are out of town because it's winter and they're not here because they're retired. Um, you understand what I mean? So you're trying to, we're trying to cover now. I mean, for me, it's an issue right now that, you know, if she comes back or, or, or goes out, then it's not an issue for me, but it'll be an issue somewhere else when somebody else is, is unavailable. And I uh, thought that would leave enough enough slots that we could fill those. And it's still just a designated amount of hours, so I mean, it doesn't mean that we're going to have five people <coughs> working. Yeah, we're not, we're, we're not asking to bring in right. five people. I mean, each work 29 hours. We're, 
asking to use this as a as coverage for for people that are out. Well, remember this money they, they have to could. pay for it on their own account. Well, they need to. We they could. I mean, the way <coughs> authorization is written, answer Mr. Colasar's question. Yeah, the authorization here, council will be authorizing five spots. But there's but the other side is the budget question. Sure. I mean, in my case of finance, I have money to pay for this because my part timer is not here. So I'm not having to come back and ask for money because I've got the money from the watch that was budgeted for the part timer. It's sure. a watch. Yes, you could hire five people, but we we would not have the money to pay for them right. unless unless somebody was out or we came back and said, hey, I need more money because I'm bringing in additional people. Now we, we're you know, sure to get that. Right? Are we changing the verbiage then to 29 hours instead of 35 in here? Or? <clears throat> I, I got rid of that paragraph entirely because it, okay. it just says five. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. So we're just taking that paragraph out. Right. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Move to approve. Second. Um, because yeah, I guess the, there's not going to be requested to the mayor's office any longer for any Well, the mayor's time. office still controls it because what we have to be careful <clears> of <throat> is that um, if, if somebody isn't in, in control of it, then that same person could be working in a variety of, of offices and be greater than 29 hours. So we need somebody to oversee the whole operation. And Don is doing a good job with that. Well, I guess the only thing that we're eliminating, remember, is the only way they can use these clinical help now is if they have unused budgeted hours and funding available to do it. What we're doing is saying they, they wouldn't need funding available. They could come to us and ask. I mean, I guess the question would be, I'd still like the fact uh, of keeping that if they have funding available out of their own department, they can go ahead and hire. I mean, I don't mind that. That's part of their operations. I sure. mean, if they don't have funding available to do it, then they, have they, to fund they can't do it. All right. I just have to ask for permission. So I, I mean, my personal opinion was leave that one sentence in. I mean, I don't want to leave the whole thing in about 35 hours. I would just still make it mandatory that they have to have funding available, just that the initial blush to even do it. But so just, you're suggesting that just purposeless. scratching the first sentence and leaving the second sentence? Well, it does, Keith, to your point, the, the question would be, in order for you to do it at all, I guess, you're right, I mean, it's making you cognizant of department head uh, when you're an elected official. but that you have to have money available in your budget already to even think about doing it. Because otherwise, you just say, well, I need money. I guess you, could, you would tell us, I guess. I, I, but, I mean, that would, I get, the reason I thought it was superfluous <clears throat> is that I have to come back to you anyway. If I didn't have the money, I, I need appropriation, which means I got to go back to council right. and ask for the money. I, I mean, I, I, I understand the purpose of restating it to remind the department. I, I guess I look at it and I, I don't know, Mayor, I mean, this, these are substitute positions. That's how we've always seen it. This is not a um, add-on. This is not five new part-time positions. You know, I'm 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 utilizing this right now because I have a person who's out. I'm not in here utilizing. And historically, this. isn't that usually when they're used? This is when somebody's out. Right, right. Well, well I think I'm okay with leaving that sense. Well, we put it in there right for the beginning for some reason. Overseeing. Right. If you take that out, then nobody's overseeing it. Right. But I, guess the, but, well, then, but, right. but I guess the question would be, I mean, we put it in there at the beginning. For, we didn't just make it up when we originally passed this. I mean, there was a purpose to it. The, the, the purpose was that we could have more than, the way this was worded, we could have more than three as long as the hours didn't add up to more than 105 in a week. Mm -hmm. That was at least the intent. Okay. <laughs> so I guess the question is, we're going to leave this. Greg, you want to address it? No. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> to give the second sentence in? To give the oversight? <laughs> I got a can of gasoline. <laughs> Would you feel better, too, if we said substitute clerical help? As opposed to just clerical help there? That's fine. Because then at least we know it's somebody filling in for somebody. With, with three and then two substitute? or. Just no five change substitute. the five, five substitute. substitute. Okay. Five substitute Which clerical help and leave the second sentence in. Mm -hmm. That work? Mm -hmm. it, it takes care of me up. Great idea. So I have to substitute and keep that second sentence. Keep the second sentence, sentence and then add in and in front of clerical help. We'll say five substitute clerical help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's my thing. Yeah, modify my original motion then. Second with the modification. <laughs> All in favor with the motion as modified? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. All right. Awesome. 
13150, creation of MCRC capital fund and transfer funds. This will create a new fund. <coughs> it will be the uh, MCRC capital fund. This uh, is how the JOA was set up to handle the capital funds. We handled it as a purchase order because the school was making the expenditures and we were reversing them. Um, but in going over this with uh, the new treasurer at the school and with Mike, it's going to be better if we have this fund. And the transfer of money is the money that is held in the purchase orders currently. So the joint operating agreement calls for an annual $100,000 contribution from each, from the school and from the city, so that we will have uh, capital funds available when capital projects are needed. So our, um, our money currently is in the 574 account? It's within the, the fund, right? The half that we owe in the school. Do you guys have a separate fund, or how do you guys do your? They do. Okay, I don't know why I took the we'll keep it. We're keeping it. Anybody have any questions on it? Just remember when Mike comes and says, Oh look at my five seventy four kind of hardly have any money in it, we kinda of know where the money is. <laughs> Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thirteen one fifty one community development director job description. That's me. Here. Um the, if you look at the second page of the job description, the top there, um, we're moving to a strike or requesting to strike uh, what's struck out there because it was reiterated <coughs> further down in the italicized uh, version. And then on the third page, um, we had just the um, four letters AICP as opposed to spelling, spelling out what that really was. So we made those recommendation for those corrections um, for the new job description. Uh, just a question about the job description and what it entails and the pay for the job. I know there was talk a while back for a modification of the disposition. Do um, you remember that? Uh, there was a change and uh, this was years ago. Modification of disposition? Of, of, the, of the salary that would be okay. that would be paid to this position. There's no, is there, has there been, did you review that? Is there any concern about the current pay range for this position uh, compared with the job description or are we still okay with that? Yeah, I think we are because <clears throat> we had a fair amount of folks apply and, and a good pool of candidates. Uh, if on the other hand, when we review and interview these candidates, we have a change of heart, then we'll come back. But I, I'm comfortable that if we can get the position filled for that job rate. Right? There's no reason to pay anymore. And I don't recall. What was the range again for the position? Do you recall? Does anybody recall? Not off the top of my head. I thought it was probably something between 60 and 70 something. I know. I think we wanted to modify it to raise it to 80 something. I don't think we wanted to. I don't recall off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on the modification of job description? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. 13152, expenditure over $15,000 for CDWG. This is another one of those uh, where the contractor <laughs> has been used before by different departments and then they've just gone over the 15000 So in order for us to continue to use CDWG, we need to approve it through finance. <clears throat> what is CDWG? It's a software, yeah, it's software hardware, oh, okay. uh, clearinghouse, warehouse. Entity. Okay. Computer geek store. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 13153, hosted payment server, MCRC. Mike? Thank you. I originally um, was going to have a guest service manager attend the meeting, and she couldn't make it tonight. That's Michelle. Um, but I'm uh, pretty much on the project, obviously. Um, what it is is we are not PCI compliant for our credit card processing as of right now. Uh, State Auditor came in two months ago, did an audit, and there was a lot of um, things that weren't um, consistent with what they should be for the PCI compliancy. Now, every month the bank does a test on it, and according to the bank, we are PCI compliancy, but if the State Auditor says we're not, we're going to make changes to correct that. Um, this is going to a hosted server. Um, but what it is is Active, which is the company that supplies us with our class software, 
does all our program registration. Um, everything's on this payment server. Um, they are in charge of that. They, and that's an inclusive contract that we have with them, so no one else can host this, just so we can talk about that ahead of time. They want to host our credit card payment processing for us. Um, I did run it by uh, Darren. We talked to talked to Darren for a little bit about it um, back when we first started talking about it. He thought it was a good idea also because anything getting it um, out of the rec center and the liability away from the rec center is a good thing to do. For the overall cost, once you break it all down, you see the changes. We pay $26,000 a year now in credit card processing fees. It's one twenty five through the bank. Um, this would go up to two point nine, and uh, you know for our revenues, so we bring it in at about thirty two three twenty. Um, subtracting off what we didn't really mention or get in detail about is there's three thousand of online registration that we pay also, and there's fifteen hundred towards the licensing fees that we use also. Those would kick back off too. So we're really looking at a cost of about. 2256 increase for changing this over to a hosted server. Um, per go, year? Yes. To go the other route would be to uh, pay a consulting fee to come in first, tell us what we need to do, um, state audit wise, you know, referring back to the state audit, what we need to do to correct it all. And that include, includes a new server in the server room upstairs, putting a lot gate on it, uh, password protected. We know the servers can cost up to, I think it was $7,000 the last server we bought for class. Um, so all those fees plus the consulting fees. Um, DSP, just before they left in July, we asked Glenn to come and talk about this because he had mentioned about the PCI compliance probably a year ago. And uh, he had said consulting fees. You know, I, I expected him to come back with a number saying, oh yeah, we'll do it, you know, be all over it. But um, they didn't want anything to do with it. He said, your consulting fee is probably about 16,000 just to start for us to come in and tell you what you need to do to make those changes. Then you have to go buy all the hardware and do all the changes. And every year there'd be consulting fees. So overall, this is what we're suggesting. Um, definitely would say it's the, it's the best route. And uh, liability-wise, gets us out of liability. Increases two um, patrons to be able to use two other different types of credit cards, including Discover and American Express. So what percentage of renewals or initial signups are on credit card? Oh, uh, well, 1.1 1 .1, uh, million of the revenues is credit card processing. So those numbers were based off of 1.1. So we and we pick that up, of course, we don't, pass, annual we don't pass it through to the credit card user. That's our fee that we pay. Right. We pay it now, and we'll still pay it through the hosting. Right. And then if we if we want to recoup that, most likely recoup it under the fee itself that we charge the user. Right. Understood. Any questions? Uh, I just want to say that based on my limited knowledge of how these things work, I, I, it's the right way to go. I believe uh, we, we couldn't do it as efficiently and as cost effectively to try to do it in-house. Right. There are several companies, and in fact, I, I can't quote off the top of my head what company it was, but right now in litigation of for not just like thousands of dollars, but millions of dollars for um, the loss of a lot of people's credit card information. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to go through that. So I'm sure there's that's tomorrow. And do we do this with the other account? I assume we do the same thing with the water account and all that. And people, oh, are we doing that now? And the finance department with respect to the new online payments. Have any compliance issues with us? Oh. Move to approve with the emergency cost. Second, with including emergency cost. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thirteen one fifty four zoning code and zoning map amendment. Andy. Uh, this is. The formal submission of the uh, draft zoning code and zoning map provisions, um, and looking for the setting of a public hearing and consideration by council. This was approved uh, once before and had to be rescinded due to uh, <coughs> inaccurate um, notices to the affected property owners. Um, then it was reviewed, went back through the planning commission. Uh, Planning Commission did approve a recommendation to Council uh, on August 8th at the meeting this year, August 8th, um, the remainder of the properties. All joint property owners were notified with their current zoning uh, regulations and the proposed zoning regulations. So they would be able to look and see how it would affect their particular properties. Um, and we did hold a public hearing at the Planning Commission meeting. And uh, they are recommending. I, I only have one question on the whole zoning thing, just to just to.
clarify for myself because we went through a whole process with it on I guess it would be West Liberty Street and the um, Dollar General store is that parcel included in this and, and what do we just so we don't have to go through that again <coughs> I, I assume it's going from a C2 to a C3 it looks like I would assume that parcels in there I guess it's going to a more no, intensive. I actually have a list of the actual parcel numbers, but without knowing the actual parcel number. Yeah, I understand. But I guess I don't want to have a request coming again for another Dollar General at the same location and we're in the same boat because we know we don't want that there. At least, I think we don't want that there. Anybody well, I think the, want the intent was to clean up the zoning in certain corridors in order to make it more consistent. It was, right. we, in some places, mm -hmm. we had what looked like spot zoning, but right. it wasn't intended to be that way. It was intended to clean this up. It also removed the C4 district um, and combined it into the C3 district. The C4 district dealt with 10 acre parcels. We no longer have any large, huge 10 acre parcels for big box stores. Those are already established and in place. Um, so it kind of absorbed that into there. Um, so it was, that was a big part of it also. Okay. I just want to make sure we, if that issue will come again. No, I'm just saying it was a huge controversial issue. And if we didn't change anything and we're going to approve something that allows that to happen, it's kind of hard to go back and say, well, we really didn't want that. Well, we just approved it. We wanted it. Right. Okay. So we know. Well, we have to go through the whole process again. Yes. We, we have to go to so public hearings. That could come up at that time. Right. And right. right. you could have your answer definitively by right. that time. Yes. But I think we should proceed with the public hearing. Right. Any other questions? That's all we're doing is proceeding with the public hearing. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Do we need a motion to proceed? Do you, or is this just informative? Is we that we're going to? I guess we're going to. 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 <coughs> well, are we going to do it again? Do we have to do it again because we're Yeah, you might as well approve it, Jay. But it's okay. if you're going to approve them again after the public hearing after because public we can't hearing. pass the legislation right. until we have okay, a public so hearing. Okay, so we'll have a public hearing. So when we bring it back, that's when you do the final approval? Yep. What, what was that? All right. So we move to a public hearing on 13154. Next item, 13155, expenditure over $15,000 increase the PO for winged foot. Higher. Who is this? Nino? Yes, my opinion. Uh, trying to spread the uh, POs amongst the different uh, entities locally Coffin Tire, North Gateway. Um, started the last round for the last quarter, so John will take that to 25000 It's above the $15,000 threshold. So, yeah. sanitation. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 13156 authorizing payment over three thousand dollars per ORC 5705.41 D1. Mr. Durham. You um, may see more of these in the future. The auditors um, made a point out of this, although they didn't cite us um, for last year, but they made a point out of this being something that they're um, they've been asked to watch for. Any expenditure that's made without um, having the appropriate prior authorization, which means a purchase order issued by the finance department. Is called is what's called a then and now um, under state code. It's we don't have to pay it, and it, you know, but we we do because it's something we needed to use. This is an example. They had to buy these for this project, but they didn't have a purchase order in advance. But any over any of these that are over three thousand dollars have to come to council for authorization. And basically, if I remember correctly, this if I remember correctly, th this is saying that. Yes, these per pieces parts were purchased at this time, and the funds were available the funds to were pay available for. At and they that still time. are, and we're going to go ahead and pay. Okay. Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm most curious. Thirteen one fifty seven. Um, uh, can I suggest you table this to the end of the meeting in case you don't have time to finish because this is not an immediate. Okay. 13158. Budget amendments. What we got here? Get there. All right. 13158, we have uh, finance for 2013 039 Rec Center Administration Capital Contribution. 
we closed this deal and we shouldn't have. So we need hundred thousand dollars per week again so we can reopen. And will it be stuck in the new account? It will eventually be pushed over to the new account. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Move to approve. Second. All favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 8383 Office Manager Family Coverage. Here? Yes, sir. This, uh, <clears throat> the office manager since uh, 2002 has opted out of the family coverage and <clears throat> due to a change in the uh, um, spouse's coverage, um, is requesting now to cover the, the city's family plan. Um, it's been a bargain for the city and I guess that you approve this. This comes out of the health care line, so this is non discretionary. Third department heads. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those curious. 8443 Friends of the Cemetery donation. Tim? This is just a donation from the Friends of the Cemetery. It absolutely is. This was the, the third and final phase, was completed at Old Town Cemetery. Uh, this is the reimbursement uh, for that work. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those most curious. 13159 OP and F member contribution rate increases. There were some questions on this this morning. Are the city's contribution in the collective bargaining agreement is worded as 10%. So when OPF raises their contributions, the city does not pick up that difference. And the intent here is to just to specify that we are going to continue paying 10% right. of the wages and the additional will be obviously then and I saw Mr. Rose's right. It says ten percent of the eleven and a half percent, which is really that one point, right? One percent. So it's ten percent flat. Anything over ten percent is picked up by the. Right. I don't know how you want to word it. Ten percent out of the, or you know, to, to clarify what we. Or the intended. first ten percent of the contribution. First time, that's why something I mean, like that. That is correct. That was our intent. It's the first ten percent of the contribution the city pays no matter what. Right. Move to approve with the emergency cost. Second, including emergency clause. Oh, we're going to have that include the modification as, mo it doesn't as modified, being the first 10 percent right. of the amount uh, being due. All in favor with the emergency clause? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. As modified. The next item we have is item 13160, increased PO of Epic Aviation, amending ordinance 8813. Mr. Durham. We created two purchase orders when we began the fuel uh, arrangement. The first was to repay flight services for our first fuel fill up, and then the second was to pay Epic for future fill up. <coughs> this is to take the, the remaining balance from the flight services PO and apply it to the Epic PO because we're done paying flight services. So we don't need that PO anymore. We've closed it, but I'd like that money to be able to pay Epic if we need the fuel. And do we not have any idea how the fuel purchases are doing from third parties? Um, no, we haven't. We had a, a few in July. We had about like five thousand dollars in July, but it was really just getting started. So I'm, I'm gonna have a better idea of when we close August and have a look at where we are. But we also just issued last week the smart card to um, air air management. I think it is, is the name of the corporate entity that runs that uh, medical helicopter. We also sold some to that um, to the helicopter that runs around and trims um, trees by power lines. They bought. Significant quantity of fuel, but I don't know how much we have to close the month and seen everything on that yet. Okay. Well, besides, uh, you know, Mr. Hubers, and besides the helicopters, I mean, are we having anybody coming into the airport, stopping in to use our new tanks, and then heading out via airplane, or are, they, are we seeing that yet, or no? Well, we we're August now. We really just got started yeah. four weeks ago, so I don't really have much history to report. No. It's going to probably take six months to a year for word to get out that we even have jet fuel also. Okay. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 13-163, the MCRC five-year capital improvement plan. Right. Uh, yep, yeah, this just requests to approve the five-year capital plan. Um, on 815, the advisory board approved the six to the zero. This is something you looked at back in 2009 when we were looking at the balcony project also, the fiber plan. So this is just an updated version. Uh, I think the next step I have to take to the school board according to you know, uh, request from the mayor. So. And at the end, uh, I can't have you read this, but at the end it looks like uh, 
Um, you have a balance of um, in 2018 of 1.137300 uh, million dollars remaining as a balance in the capital budget. The after the expenditures. 2013 at the end of this year, you mean? No, I was looking at the end of the 2018. Uh, oh. The projected balance would be 1.1 million about. Yes, depending on spending and what else might come up during that time. And uh, what I'm requesting is for the PO is, um, since we're closing the POs 30 days from now with the council's approval, then I'll need to request that funds for the estimated 2013. Um, the total is 282.4. 51, but the uh, half, our half would be the 141, 225 that we need in a PO to pay out. Yep. You know, this project. Mm -hmm. Move to approve with emergency costs. Second, including the emergency costs. Any further discussion? All in favor with the emergency costs? Aye. 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 Next item is uh, 13164, the purchase agreement regarding 119 Public Square. And I think Mr. Huber has been working on this one, if you all recall, through our executive sessions that we talked about. We talked about acquiring the old drive-through from Key Bank on the corner of North Court, or South Court, and Liberty. Um, and the reason for the acquisition, of course, is to convert that facility into public restrooms. Uh, that'll be used uh, for the events on the square and for other things that occur on the square. The purchase agreement uh, has been negotiated with Mr. Huber and the current landowner, which the current landowner, of course, is not Key Bank. It's a third-party entity that bought the note, I believe, through uh, either foreclosure and are willing to sell the property to the city of Medina. I don't know, Mr. Huber, you got other things to add with respect to that? <coughs> Did some back and forth negotiation with respect to the lot where the parking spaces are to the north. And uh, what we agreed to do is make sure that those parking spaces remain available to the public so that uh, whoever purchases the key bank building itself has some place to go that's nearby. And um, the language that we arrived at, I think, accomplishes that. We put a deed restriction on that particular lot so that it's, it does remain preserved in the future. And this lot he's referring to is a lot north of the building, which includes seven or eight parking spaces currently with access off of South or North Court. Um, not South Court, North Court. And that would be available to the general public as a first come, first serve basis and that'll always be there to also aid in the parking of the building that's located next to Second Soul, which is the key bank building he's referring to. And the other parcels, the building itself, the parcel in front, we can do what we please. And the little parcel where there's a jog of a building coming off of the old key bank building, we'll have to do a lot split because that portion of that building is on the property we proposed to purchase, which we do not want that little portion of the building because it's half the building, will, will be kept uh, and adjoined to the, the key bank building itself. And there will not be unlimited rights of access between our building and that building to come to the front parcel to exit on the Liberty. That's not going to happen. We could close that off if, if we wanted to, whether with landscaping or with anything else that we would propose to do. So this will be the first step in acquiring that building. And then the next step will be uh, going out to bid to make a determination of what it would cost to convert the building. Uh, and enclose the drive-through for public restrooms for the for the square. Any questions? And we're we vote on it today, and then it will go to council the next meeting with the emergency clause to give people an opportunity for the next two weeks to ask questions, whatever they like to do. But we need to pass it with the emergency clause, otherwise the mayor cannot sign the purchase agreement for 30 days after the next council meeting, which. I don't, you know, there might be issues with the seller waiting, but I think that will give ample amount of time for people to comment on it. Right. <coughs> Move to approve. With Second. The, with the, you need the emergency clause today. Okay. Then. Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. And then we'll vote on the next, next council meeting. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. <coughs> see a great relief to a lot of people. Oh, <laughs> that was bad. And it looks so much nicer than the uh, Porter Johns that we had last week. Yeah. 
It'll be a hundred percent improvement. It'll be, it'll be a fantastic addition. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then that leads to some of the concerns yeah, of between the between that and Marie's, we should be in good shape. <laughs> Keep going to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Thirteen one fifty seven going back. Considering an amendment to the bid requirements that Keith alluded to that we can push to the end, and let's get to that section. Yeah, I don't know if you want to come up with a, a final answer to this at this point. The, the first thing is the state changed the bid requirements from 25 to 50. Um, a number of years ago, when they went from 15 to 25, we followed along. Um, we don't have to. I mean, you can have a, a, a more um, stringent requirement than the state. If you want to, the other thing, I, I listed all the other requirements in here because when we did that uh, last time, we rearranged all of this. If you want to increase all of these while you're looking at it or just do that one or not do any of it, that's up to you, but I wanted to give you the um, opportunity to discuss it. So they're changing the minimum requirement that usually the state's saying you don't have to go out to bid if it's uh, right now, if it's under 25000 and they're changing it to say you don't have to go out to bid if it's under fifty thousand. Yeah, that, they have changed that. That's that has changed. Oh, they have changed it. So right now we go out to bid for anything that's um, over twenty five thousand. And so the question is, do we want to change that to go out to bid and change it to anything over fifty thousand, so we can select who we want to select for anything under fifty thousand? I don't know. Yet, I, don't, I don't know if I'm ready to vote on it today, but I think we should think about that. Something to think about. And what else is there besides that? <laughs> Well, I gave you the other. I gave you the rest of the the rest of our requirements, up to a thousand is department head, and then up to fifteen thousand is board of control. Fifteen to twenty five is finance, mm -hmm. and over twenty five, um, even if it, even if it doesn't is does not um, require a bid because some things are exempt from that, which is specific founder things like that, but it still requires council approval. Well, I guess some um, of the question would be council approval. I mean, that is good, but what does it cost us? Uh, both in time and money the, the bid the bid is mostly a time issue because whenever you have to bid something you have to bring it to council with a with a spec get the spec approved wait the 30 days unless there's an emergency clause advertise it wait for the wait for the bids to come in open the bids award the bid and that's all a lot of that's all a significant amount of time um, if you're coming to council and I definitely don't want to suggest that we're going to just, you know, pick vendors and buy stuff without looking. You can come into council and say, hey, I've asked four vendors, I've asked three vendors, whatever. And these are some comparative prices. I think we should go with the low one. It's a lot, it's a lot quicker because you don't have to, you don't have to do the advertising way for the bids. So we don't have to go to 50, we can go to 30 if we want, let's say. We can go to 35, can, we can do anything we want up to 50. You can't go over what the state's requirement is because the state, I don't think, correct with these vendors, but. but I think we would want to, I mean, I would think we should look at maybe changing the 25 to a number, but not 50, mm -hmm. uh, because of the cost the value of money is a little different, and it's going to continue to change where you don't get the same value for $25,000 as you used to get, unfortunately. But maybe we should make a determination uh, what we'd like to do with that, um, with the understanding that you know, we have that range to play with. And then those other thresholds that are in there, I mean, right now we go just to finance, but not to council. Again, it's time. For those things that we bring to finance that don't have to go to council, it saves two weeks right off the bat because you don't have to wait the two weeks from the finance committee to the council meeting, but it also saves another 30 days because finance actions take effect. They don't have to wait the 30 days. You don't have the emergency clause issue. It's just you bring it to finance, it's voted on, and that's approved. Well, I think we've had a pretty good success. I mean, I don't know that that's a good check and balance to mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't saying we should get away. We should do away with it. What you could consider is you could consider if you're increasing those amounts, you can increase those amounts down through these steps. Right. You can say, okay, the finance committee maybe is going to go up instead of being 15 to 25. Finance committee will be 15 to you said 35. Um, council will be 35 to 50, and then bid will be over 50. And all of this is subject to your how you want to set it up. Right. So, any can you keep that on? We'll table it so we don't lose it. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. We, I guess we could go into executive session if you'd like uh, now. Do we have enough time for that? Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. Okay. I'll make a motion then to go into executive session for the purposes to consider the purchase of property for public purposes or the sale of property for benefiting bidding because premature disclosure would give an unfair competitive authority to add two persons personal private interest as an advert to the general public. Second. Brian. Is there any further discussion on that? Uh, we'll, we'll take a I have to do a roll call on that, but we'll have to. We will come back to adjourn uh, that most likely. <coughs> it may be after the council meeting. Um, I don't know if we maybe. Upstairs or no, no, we're, we're supposed to be adjourning here, but if we stay down oh, here, we can, no, we, can, we can stay down here and we should get done. We'll adjourn out of it down here, but right. probably get no action after. Uh, there's a roll call. Okay, there's a roll call on this one. Lamb. Yes. Hilbert. Yes. Shields. Yes. Yes. Boyd. yes. Simpson? No. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking so. And close it. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 Yes.